Welcome to the next episode of Deacons with D. I am your host. I am Dietmar Ostermann, and I'm the regular guy from Long Island. Today, I'd like to share with you the ins and outs of tasting wine. How do I taste wine? My famous four steps. Typically, looking at the bottle and the wine, smelling the aromas of the wine, tasting the wine, and then observing the finish. Those are my basic four steps. And then after I execute these four steps, I rate the wine. And of course, these four steps are not all equal. The most important step in tasting the wine is the actual taste in the mouth. Second most important is smelling the aromas. I have here my Decans with D engraved glasses, crystal. Got those for my daughter and manager. So, step one, this is a Cliff Lady 2018 Sauvignon Blanc from Napa Valley. So this is a square bottle, not round shaped, and it's a rather plain and simple white beige label with black writing on it, and the bottle is green. I would say overall, the bottle appearance and the label design Rather boring. Doesn't get good scores for me. <sighs> now let's pour this wine. Always good when you look at the wine to uh, look at it on a white background. I happen to have here my marble countertop is white. But I also have a light to my right where I can hold the wine into. So this wine, as you would expect, from a Sauvignon Blanc, which is typically a little bit lighter and fresher than a Chardonnay, is lighter in color. It's a pale yellow color, very sparkly, so very see-through. I do like the color a lot, particularly for a Sauvignon Blanc. If this would be a Chardonnay, it would look not right to me, it would be too light. But for a Sauvignon Blanc, which is a light summer wine, this looks right to me. Then you shake the wine around in the glass a little bit to look at the lines, also referred to as the legs in the wine. And the legs really are referring to the sugar content and the alcohol content in the wine. More sugar, more alcohol, you have stronger legs. So this is a Sauvignon Blanc. It should be rather light, not much alcohol. And the lines are also therefore very, very little. That is what I would expect. And the wine lines really also, chemically speaking, refer to the viscosity in the wine. You know, a thicker, sugary, uh, strong alcohol wine has more viscosity and doesn't uh, run as quickly off the side walls of the wine. So this is the lock. I like it a lot in the glass from the color. I don't like the bottle and the label as much. Now, step two. Let's give it a sniffy sniff, the aromas. For that, I shake it in the glass. We wanna have maximum oxidation. And then you stick your nose almost into the glass. First thing I smell is apple, fresh green apple. You wanna smell at least two fruits. And ideally, in order to give more color to the fruits you choose, you choose an adjective with a fruit that describes the, uh, the fruit that you smell the aromas the best. So I said fresh green apple. Already two adjectives to the apple that makes it more clear what I think about this fruit, right? It's not a ripe apple, a yellow apple, it's a fresh green apple. And then ideally, in addition to fruits, I always tell my clientele, try to smell something else like another spice, vanilla, pepper, or whatever it is. In this particular case, I uh, smell some straw or 
maybe even some flowers, straw and flowers. So that describes the aromas of the wine quite well. And I always recommend to do it at least two times and do another nice little shake around it. Remember the first time I did it, I smelled the apple, the green apple right away. Second time I did it, I smelled the pear. Third time I did it, I came up with a straw and a fresh flower. So that's step two. Now comes step three, tasting it in the mouth. And before I do it, I just wanna make sure that um, you also hear from me that I want you to aerate it while you're having it in the mouth, to give it more air. Aerating means you leave a hole and suck in some air while you have the wine on the palate. And then what I'm trying to look for is what is the first early taste when I have it off what I refer to the front palate versus later on when I have it all over the mouth swished around the back palate. I make a differentiation there. And you do want to swish it all around so that the maximum of spots in your mouth can interact with the wine. Let's see how that goes. So you saw I didn't swallow the wine. Typically my tastings I do swallow the wine. Of course when you taste a lot of wine in a wine tasting it's recommended that you don't swallow the wine because then eventually you may get a little bit hipsy and tipsy. I will do it in a minute, but I differentiate between the taste of the wine in the mouth, my third step, and swallowing the wine, my fourth step. That's why I just didn't swallow it right now because I wanna take it one step at a time. So when I had this wine in the mouth, very pleasant in the front palate, then I swished it around and uh, there was apple, this green apple was overbearing all over the place. Very, very elegant. Not biting, not overbearing, very, very elegant. And the wine appeared to be well balanced. Well, what does well balanced mean? I go by the body of the wine. Has it a big body or a very flat body? This is a Sauvignon Blanc. You wouldn't expect it to have a big body. It had a medium body. For a Sauvignon Blanc, surprisingly much body. Is it sweet or more dry? Well, this one is in the middle, a little bit towards sweet. Acidity, yes, massive acidity, as you would expect from a Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc always has a lot of acidity. Tannins, no, there's absolutely no tannins in here. Alcohol, very little alcohol. So yes, you have acidity, you have a little bit of sweetness, you have a lot of body for the spine, and it's in well balance with each other. And that is what is so complicated to achieve in winemaking, that the wine really is balanced. And this wine is fantastically balanced. So I'm now taking it back into my mouth, do the same process, roll it around, but then I finish it. I swallow it because I want to describe to you what the finish does. Long finish. Beautiful. A finish could be short, can be medium, can be long. This has a long finish. The finish can be fruity. It can be spicy, it can be uh, full of tannins and sucking your tongue together after you swallowed it and then the sucking of the throat together goes on. None of it in this wine. This wine has a very elegant, long finish, fruity finish, beautiful. Based on what I just went through, summing it all up, most important is in the mouth, it was wonderful. Second most important was the aromas, the aromas of green apple, uh, that pear, that yellow pear, some of the straw, uh, hay almost, um, beautiful aromas. So I, the finish was fantastic. So I like everything except for the bottle and the label and that is really not good enough. So I would say this 
uh, Sauvignon Blanc exceeds all of my expectation. Cliff Lady does a fantastic job. I would give it somewhere between a 4.5 and a 5.0. You cannot do Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc much better. In fact, I'm leaning here towards a 4.8 for this wine. So, not that this was the purpose of this wine show, but clear by recommendation. 2018 Cliff Lady Sauvignon Blanc. Cut and going over to red. Same profile. I'm taking a little bit of a bigger glass. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon glass, and this is a crystal from Riedel out of Austria. The wine that I'm trying right now is a 2015 Outline. I never had this wine before, but I heard very good things about the 2015 Outline. It is a blend from California. The vineyard is Shadowbox Cellars, and it's a blend of 60% Zinfandel and 40% Petit Chirac, aged 20 months in oak barrels. 15% of those oak barrels were new barrels. The bottle is black. It's a dark ruby red wine, not see-through. The color looks pretty bold already. Black currant is in here as well as some not very ripe blackberries and maybe some spice. This is a bold wine. It has a little bit of tannins left, good tannins. This is not overbearing in tannins. Some people don't like tannins and they also ask, what is tannins? Well, tannins is very important for the ageability of a wine. The more tannins in it, and tannins is actually good for you, uh, the longer the wine can age. This one has a little bit of tannins left. So it, uh, this is a very good moment in time to drink this wine, 2020 for 2015. But it probably would be best, judging by the tenants, next year, in 2021. After six years, this wine would be best. So again, once in the mouth, you do feel the black currant. This wine also is very well balanced. It is a full body wine, no doubt about it. It has some acidity to it which is not always the case with these full body red wines. There's uh, medium tannins left and uh, alcohol is enormous, heavy, heavy alcohol. This is a more wine on the dry side. So full body, a little bit more on the dry side, some acidity, very little, but a little bit of tannins and um, massive alcohol, but in a nice balance. So again, a very, very good product. So this is a medium finish. It wasn't as long and pleasant as the Cliff Lady uh, Sauvignon Blanc. It also was a little bit crooked in the finish. Not as well balanced as the wine was in the mouth. The tannins comes out. I feel the alcohol coming down my throat. It has a little bit of a bite to it, but still good and still a lot of fruit in the finish. So a fruity, medium long finish with a bite, I would describe it. So overall, Outline is quite an impressive wine. If I now sum it up, I like the appearance of the wine quite a bit. I liked uh, the aromas of the wine, but not as much as the Cliff Lady. I like the wine on the palate quite a bit, which is the most important thing. And I was a little bit dissatisfied with the finish. So I would give this wine a four, maybe a 4.1 in my rating because I was actually quite positively surprised and I'm not a big Zinfandel drinker. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you now take away from this little excursion how I taste wine and try it out. Next time you have a party at home, try it with your guests, go through these four steps. And if you like this show, Subscribe it right here and press that like button, thumbs up right here, and follow me on Vivino. I will rate these wines on Vivino if, if I haven't done so already. See you next Sunday.